Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is January 28th, 2021. On this day, January 28th, 1986, we lost one of our brothers when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded unexpectedly. As I said back in 1986. African American physicist and astronaut Ronald McNair was one of the seven crew members killed in 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger explosion. Ronald McNair was an MIT trained physicist who specialized in laser research before joining NASA in the late 1970s. In February 1984, he became just the second African to reach space, serving as a mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. On January 28, 1986, he was one of the seven crew members killed when the Challenger unexpectedly exploded 73 seconds after takeoff. Ronald Irwin McNair was born on October 21, 1950 in Lake City, South Carolina. The second of three boys born to Carl, a mechanic, and Pearl, a teacher, McNair displayed an early aptitude for technical methods, earning him the nickname Gizmo. McNair's interest in space was piqued by the launch of the Russian satellite Sputnik in 1957 and boosted by the appearance of Star Trek on TV years later. Its multi-ethnic cast pushing the boundaries of what was possible for a small-town African boy. An outstanding all-round student at Carver High School, McNair starred in baseball, basketball, and football, and played the saxophone for the school band. He graduated as valedictorian of the class of 1967, earning the scholarship to attend North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. After initially considering majoring in music at North Carolina A&T, McNair eventually came back around to his love for science, graduated magna cum laude in 1971 with a Bachelor of Science in Physics. From there, it was on to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, as a Ford Foundation Fellow. Adjusting to the new environment proved a challenge for McNair, who came from a historically black undergraduate school. He later faced a potentially career-altering obstacle when two years of specialized laser physics research for his doctorate was stolen, but he managed to produce a second set of data in one year and earn his PhD in physics in 1976. At this point, McNair was rec a recognized expert in the fields of chemical and high-pressure lasers. He went to work for the Hughes Research Laboratories in Malibu, California, where he focused on such tasks as development of lasers for isotope separation and conducted research on electro-optic modulation for satellite space communication. While working as a staff physicist at Hughes Research Laboratories, McNair learned that the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, was looking for scientists to join its shuttle program. Of the 11,000 applicants, McNair was one of 35 selected in January 1978, and he completed his training and evaluation period the following August. About five months after Guion S. Bluford became the first African in space, McNair became the second with the launch of the STS-41B mission of the Space Shuttle Challenger on February 3rd, 1984. A mission specialist, McNair operated Challenger's robotic arm to help astronaut Bruce McCandless conduct his historic untethered spacewalk. McNair logged 191 hours in space as Challenger's orbited Earth 122 times before returning to Kennedy Space Center on February 11th. McNair, who played the saxophone for a band during college, maintained his love for the instrument throughout his life, and he was famously photographed playing his sax during his first mission to space in 1984. Additionally, he ac the accomplished physicist and astronaut was highly skilled in karate. He won the 1976 AAU Karate Gold Medal and five regional championships, eventually achieving the rank of fifth degree black belt. In early 1985, McNair was tapped for the STS-51L mission of the Space Shuttle Challenger, an undertaking that would draw media attention for a selection of teacher Krista McAuliffe as a civilian payload specialist. McNair was tasked with controlling Challenger's robotic arm, 
to release and retrieve a satellite to observe Halley's Comet. After multiple delays, Challenger launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, shortly before noon on January 28, 1986. 73 seconds later, on live television, the shuttle suddenly and unexpectedly exploded at around 46,000 feet, killing all seven crew members. McNair was just 35 years old. A presidential commission determined the explosion to be caused by the failure of a rubber O-ring seal on one of the Challenger's solid rocket boosters, allowing hot gases to leak into the hydrogen fuel tank. McNeil's wife later won a settlement against the seal manufacturer, Martin Theocall. McNeil married Queens, New York native Cheryl Moore in 1976. They had two children, son Ronald, who was born in 1982, and a daughter Joy, born in 1984. Following the death of her husband, Cheryl joined other surviving family members of the crew to form the Challenger Center for Space Science Education serving as its founding director. McNair was a member of several organizations during his professional career, including the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Physical Society, and the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics Board of Trustees. Among his many honors, he was named a Distinguished National Scientist by the National Society of Black Professional Engineers in 1979 and received the Friend of Freedom Award in 1981. He also garnered honorary doctorates from North Carolina A&T State University, Morris College, and the University of South Carolina. He was also a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. In 2004, McNair and the rest of his Challenger crew were posthumously honored with the Congressional Space Medal of Honor by President George W. Bush. McNair's legacy endures through the various educational initiatives and programs that bears his name. Founded in 1996, the Dr. Ronald E. McNair Educational Science Literacy Foundation, or DREAM, D-R-E-M-E, encourages students from kindergarten through college in areas of STEM learning. Additionally, the U.S. Department of Education's Ronald E. McNair Post-Baccalaureate Achievement Program provides grants to promising students from disadvantaged backgrounds. McNair's accomplishments also influenced the following generations of African Americans who learned to dream big. His admirers include astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, another world-renowned intellect who found fulfillment via contact sports as a high school wrestler. An astronaut who was also a black belt in karate served as a kind of affirmation that an athletic hobby need not interfere with academic pursuits, Tyson told the New York Daily News. On this day, January 28, 1986, we lost our brother, Dr. Ronald E. McNair, when the space shuttle Challenger exploded over Cape Canaveral, Florida. For those of you who have already subscribed, I continue to thank you for your continued support. For those of you who have not yet subscribed, we welcome you to join the family. Just hit that subscribe button. So until tomorrow, God willing, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalam.